Good evening, everybody. How are you? Thank you. Good evening, Rabbi. Okay. So here we are. Okay, so well, we're starting a new chapter. It says here. But now we already you know talked about extensively, right? The, the mitzvah of Megillah. So now he's going to talk about the other mitzvah that we have on Purim. Uh, so he says, right? So there's another mitzvah which is that we give money to the poor. So what do we do? We got to give at least uh, to two. Poor people, uh, two presents, right? In other words, the money, basically, right? <clears throat> Doesn't really say, yeah, yeah. So we give one to each, right? Uh, two people, each one gets one present. Um, and um, so this money is collected, you know, uh, he says, right? Uh, by the gabaim, right? The, the people who are in charge of the charity, they collect the money and then they hand it out to the poor on on Purim. Or you know, also you 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 can also give it directly to the poor. You know, if you don't have uh, an organization like that, you know, that collects the money, you can do it yourself as well. Uh, same thing. But the thing is, you got to know who to give it to and where and when. <clears throat> all these things. Okay, so um, so he says, um, yeah, well, yeah. So then he says, uh, Okay, I guess we'll see the bit yourself. We'll, we'll get back there. So it says regarding this, the bit yourself. Uh, where is the source for this? the Megillah, the first pair of Megillah. Zayin Amud Aleph, Tane Rav Yosef um Mishloach Manot Ish Lereu. So it talks over there in the Megillah about giving gifts, you know, to your fellow Jew. Shte Manot Le Ish Echad, Matanot Le Avionim, Shte Matanot Le Shte Bani Adam. So we have here two different mitzvot, right? One is to give to the poor, as we said, just described. There's also another mitzvah to give, a uh, descent to, to your fellow Jew. It doesn't have to be poor. Just any Jew, right? The... Uh, a gift, you know, uh, for Purim, uh, basically, right? Which is going to be, uh, you know, food, right? Uh, or drinks. So, two different things. But right now, we're concentrating more on the, right, um, on the poor. Okay. So, it says, So, it says, next chapter, we're going to talk about the issue of... Uh, Right, sending uh, food to your fellow Jew, right? That's a different mitzvah. <clears throat> Good. So, yeah, we'll see the Shulchan Ruch here on this. It says Shulchan Ruch, Hayav kol adam miten nefachot, nefachot, shte matanot neshdeanim, right? So, we are obligated to give to two poor people, right? Uh, each one, one gift, right? Uh, that's the minimum that we have to do. So, <clears throat> there's always questions about, you know, you know how to do this mitzvah. There's a lot of questions that come up, but uh, first thing, you know, first thing you got to know is that um, you got to find somebody who's really poor, you know, and that's not so easy, by the way, like, especially in America, you know, to find somebody who's, you know, so poor that he doesn't have money for the, uh, for the seudah. Somebody like that, you know, who doesn't have money to, to make Purim. Usually to have, find somebody like that is not so easy. Uh, but, uh, you know, you can uh, you can try, you know, do, do the best you can. If you can't find somebody, you can't. What can you do, right? Uh, as we said. Uh, 
you can also try to send it to some, you know, organization, as we said, right? And uh, they'll do it for you. But you got to make sure that they're honest, you know, and they're straight and, and they're doing it in the right way. You got to be on top of it. So, yeah, uh, that's what it says in Shulchan Ruch. So, uh, says the Ramah, Yesh Omim Sheesh Li Ten Kodem Purim Machatzit Okay, we're, before we get to this, right, I also want to tell you, the question is also comes up, you know, how much do you have to give, right? Uh, to each poor person, what is the minimum, what, whatever, right? So <clears throat> the truth is that there's two different opinions about this. One says, you know, you can just give like a minimal amount, you know, like the, the small coin, you know, a quarter or something, whatever, that's good enough. There's also another opinion that says you have to give him enough, you know, that he can like have a meal. You know, uh, like, you know, some kind of a bagel or some kind of slice of pizza or whatever. So you've got to give him enough for that. So, you know, according to that, you should give him like, you know, $3, $4, $5, you know, so he can get, you know, a decent, some decent meal, whatever, right? Uh, for So he can have something to eat on Purim. Six dollars, five dollars, whatever it is, right? Uh, so you know, yeah. So you should try to, you know, if you can, try to do the the second opinion. You know what I mean? Which is that you should give like enough for a meal. So five dollars, six dollars is good. You know, four dollars, three dollars, whatever. You know, something like that, right? Depending on what kind of meal you want to get him. Right? You want to get him two slices of pizza, or you want to get him a bagel with cream cheese, or whatever, right? Uh, whatever it is you want to get him. <laughs> Okay. So, yeah. So, basically, right. But if you're richer, you know, if you're a person who has more, right, the uh, ability to give more, so you should give more, you know, something better. Depending on your, you know, your um, ability to give, right. Um, if you can afford to give more, you should give more. You know, so give them, you know, if you're, if you're well off, you know, you're doing good. So give him 50 bucks, you know, and let him have a nice, you know, let him have a nice meal, you know, let him go to, right, the, a restaurant, you know, and have a nice meal, <laughs> whatever, right, whatever it is. So, yeah, uh, that's the way it goes when it comes to this. Uh, so says the Ramah here, right, there's another mitzvah that he brings in here. Right, so there's also now... The other mitzvah, which is zecher lemachatzit shekel, right? That we give a remembrance for the half a shekel that we used to give in the time of the that the temple was standing. So R- Rama says, right? The custom is by them, by the Ashkenazim. The custom was, and it still is, right? Maybe until this day, you know, that they give like a half of the, you know, a half of the. Um, the particular currency that happens to be in that country, you know. So in this country, we have a, we have a dollar, right? So according to that, you give like a half a dollar, <clears throat> and that does the trick, you know. Um, but right, uh, that's one opinion. There's another opinion that says uh, you should give um, more than that, and we'll see how that works, right? The truth is, it goes according to the weight of silver, according to that opinion. So you got to first check, right? How much is sil- does silver cost uh, this particular year, right? Whatever, before the holiday, you check how much it costs, and according to that, you got to give the right the proper amount. Which uh, we'll see what the, what that is, right? Usually, um, you know, for, like you know, judging from the past years, usually comes out to be like um, you know six dollars, seven dollars, eight dollars, something like that. If you want to do it uh, right, uh, according to the more stringent opinion. But if a person is really down and out, right, he can't give that much, you know, whatever. Some people are, you know, not doing so well. Especially in Israel, you know, there's a lot of poverty there. So, uh, you know, if that's the case, you can give just a half, you know, half, whatever, half of the currency that you have there. And that does also, the, that does the job, you know, whatever, right? So, uh, you know, according to, according to what you can do. So this you do, right, according to each person, right? In other words, every, every family member you give, for each family member. <laughs> so he says here, So he says, since it says three times, right, Truma, in that parsha, so therefore he says you should give three. So according to that, right, you should give like three, you know, three half dollars, you know, according to the first opinion, all right, which is going to be a dollar and a half, right, dollar fifty. 
ויש לי תנוע בליל פורים, קודם שמתפללים מנחה. So he says, the custom is to give this before, right, uh, we read the Megillah, you know, before, when we come to the, to, on the eve of Purim, to the synagogue. So before we start, you know, the prayers and all the Megillah and everything, uh, we give, right, uh, each one gives his uh, portion, whatever, right, uh, for this Zecher Machat Sikha Shekel. Remember, it's of the half a shekel. <laughs> In the times of the temple, this money was given uh, to, uh, you know, for sacrifices. They should have money for sacrifices. In the temple, you know, uh, but nowadays, since we don't have money, we don't do sacrifices. So what we do is, you know, we give that money to uh, synagogues and, you know, yeshivot and the kolels and things like this, you know, uh, Torah institutions, whatever, or prayer institutions, whatever you want to call it, right? That's what we do. Okay, good. So then he says, Rama, he says, no hagin be medinot elu. So that's a custom in this country, right? In, in our countries, you know, to do it like that. Uh, so he says, you should give, you know, according to what we just said, three half, right? Halves of the currency that they have there. Because that's the only half we have in that country. Right? So, He's telling you, right, the, this is talking about the country of Austria, right? Something like that, you know? So in Austria, you know, at that time, the, the currency was called Weinar. Right? So you give three of the half of the halves, and that's what you do there, right? They're also called half. It's also every country like that, right? So he says, really, the obligation... Is only for people who are above the age of twenty, right? Uh, because that's the way that's the way it was in the temple. So uh, so there's another opinion that says that right, you give another one besides this, but he says custom is not like that. So you don't have to do another one. One is enough, right? Uh, so one giving is enough. <coughs> so yeah, uh, that's pretty much the story, right? So. Here, so just to recap, right? We're talking here about two, two, two different mitzvot. One is to give uh, to two poor people, right? Each one gets one gift. As we said, right? You try to give like five bucks, you know, whatever if you can, whatever, something like that. And the machasit shekel, right? Zecher machasit shekel. That goes to the synagogue or the yeshiva, whatever it is, right? Wherever you, which institution you want to give, Torah institution, right? Uh, so you give right that that, and usually right that turns out to be about uh, I don't know a few dollars, you know, seven dollars, eight dollars, six dollars, whatever it is. We'll we'll see, right? We'll have to check the the price of silver, and we can then we can calculate exactly how much it is, right? Uh, we can we can know exactly for sure. So those are two mitzvot that we just described, <laughs> right? Uh, you have any questions about that? Okay, so then we'll go on. So he brings it through here. So he says two things, right? The money that was co collected to give out to the poor, right, on Purim, they're not allowed to change that, you know, divert that money to, into a different tzedakah, right, to, into a different charity. It should stay for that charity, you know, the, the, the for, for the Purim, the Purim holiday. That's one thing. Another thing he says here, right, the tour is that um, <laughs> the poor person, you know, who received that money, he should really spend it on the seuda, right, of Purim, on, on the meal of Purim, you know, not for some other expenses, right? Not go and buy, you know, whatever, right? Uh, go go buy, you know, uh, you know, what do you call it? Uh, some shoes, you know, that's not what it's for, right? It's for the seuda. So therefore, he says the tour. <laughs> he should use that money for the seuda. The poor person, right, that received the money. So says, right, uh, Maran, uh, this bit Yosef, 
right to Baba Metziah, right? Where's the source for this? In Baba Metziah, Perk, Homanim, over there. Ein Chet Amudbet, right? Magimat Purim, the Purim, Miglat Ha'ir, Leotah Ha'ir, Ven Madak Tekin Bedavar. So he says, right, that if you're collecting, right, for Purim, the money should stay for that purpose. And also, if you're collecting in that city, it should stay for that city. So what does that mean? Don't divert it to another city, right? Uh, we want it to stay there, right? Where, you know, the per for the purpose that it was collected for. So he says, Ven medak tekin bedavar ela lekhin ta'agalim v'shokhatim v'cholim otam v'amotai yipol lekis shel tzedakah. So he says, right, in the Gemara there, that um, we take, you know, these animals and slaughter them, you know, for eating, right, for, to eat them. We buy the animals and we eat, right? In other words, we eat whatever we need for our meal. And whatever is left over, right, uh, then we give it for charity, right? Uh, that's one example, right? Today, it's not exactly like that. Uh, you know, it's a different kind of system, right? They just collect the cash and they give it out, right? That's about it. Uh, okay, so he goes on. Rabbi Eliezer Omer says Rabbi Eliezer Magebet Purim le Purim Ve'en ha'ani rasheh lekach mehem retzua Alessandalo So again, right, he says exactly what we just mentioned that the money which is, you know, taken by the poor uh, for this right, uh, from this mitzvah it shouldn't go to some other things, you know uh, right, he says, right don't buy shoelaces, right, he says <laughs> Uh, so what do you do, right? You should buy, you, you buy the seuda with that money, right? Use it for the seuda. <laughs> right? Unless he made a minimum condition that they can do that. Uh, in, in the presence of the leaders of the city, whatever. Rabbi Yaakov, Amir, Am Shemar, Dibre Rabbi Yaakov, Shemar, Mishun, Rabbi Meir, right? This name of these rabbis, Rabbi Shimon ben Gamil, Mikel. So he says, but this rabbi is lenient. So now, right, he brings the Rashi here to explain. So he says, Pinesh Rashi, Magivet Purim, right, that we collect for Purim. Ma'ot she'govim ha'gabayin mibnei ha'ir. So he says, this is talking about the money, right, that the the charity collectors collect, right, the gabayim. From the city, dwellers of the city. Lechelek la'anim, right, to give to the poor. Lis'od le'seudat Purim, for the seudat Purim. So he says, right, <clears throat> it should all be given to the poor, right, for Purim. So as we said, right, it shouldn't be diverted into another charity. That's the idea. Right, so he says, we're not particular. What does that mean? Lomar dayam So he says, you know, we don't like to start making now, right, all kinds of... Um, Right, uh, calculations. Rabbi? Yes. Um, excuse me. Um, you haven't shared on Facebook your... Oh, did I forget? Oh, my God. Ooh. You know what? I'm just going to download it there, you know? Uh, does somebody need it right now? What? Uh... Yes, uh, some people were asking. Oh, boy. Okay, Let, give me a second. One second. I'm sorry. Because uh, I'm gonna, I can just download the whole thing, you know, afterwards. But if they want to watch it now, I'll do it for them now. Thank you. Okay, give me a second. Sorry about that. It's too bad they don't come into the Zoom. Okay. Okay, we did that.
Now we'll get back to our discussion. Thanks. No problem. Okay, so as we said, right, that they shouldn't divert it to some other thing. And also, as we said, right, that um, we don't, you know, we're not particular. So what does that mean, particular? He explains, Rashi, that it means that, you know, we don't say, well, yeah, they have enough, you know, so like, we'll just give them, you know, a little bit less, and the rest of it, you know, will divert, you know, to something else. We shouldn't do that, right? So meaning what? Give them everything, you know, that, that, that was collected. Don't, uh, you know, leave over some money for some other purpose. <laughs> Since it was collected for this purpose, it should stay there for that purpose. So, in other words, right in, in, in simple English, right? Don't cheap out, right? That's what I'm <laughs> don't uh, right, uh, don't reduce their amount. You know, uh, if if you collected, you know, give them everything that you collected. That's the idea. Okay, let's go on. So it says, "Aval lokin at agalim lerov bechol amot." The motar, um, shelo yaspiku lechol bepurim imkor bepol lekis tzaka. So he just right goes back to explain that whole thing with the animals, whatever is left over, right after they eat, they 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 give it to the poor. Veze, uh, and then he says, lashon agotashi. This language of the this rabbi. Perush en gizbar ashay leafrish. So he says, uh, he explains like this, right? That the treasurer, you know, who's in charge of the uh, charity money, right, is not allowed to leafrish lefir ot enav lesorat purim, right? He cannot do it like you know, according to his judgment, whatever he thinks is the right thing to do. Ve'ashay leotzil estaka, and then the rest of it, right, to give some other charity. No, he can't do that, right? Give, you got to give the whole thing from right, from top to bottom. So then what should you do, right? At first, do all the needs of Purim. And then whatever he did, right? If he did, uh, after he does everything properly, he told Amotar So then the rest of it can go to Tzedakah, some other charity. So meaning what? That In other words, if you already did, right, enough, you know, and uh, you did everything you could, uh, you know, the, that was needed. So then the rest can also go to a different charity, he says. A little bit different than what we saw before, right? A little bit, not exactly the same. Katav Mordechi Per Kama De Bam Batra says Mordechi, Teha De Tanya Magivet Purim Me Purim Dafka Eno Yachol Le Shnotam. Hadavar Che Haino Dafka Gabai. So he says that which we said you cannot divert the money to some right some other purpose. That's talking about the collector. About Bnei Ha'ir Yacholim La Shnot Magivet Purim The Tzorot Mitzvah Chet. But he says, but the people who are you know living in that town, right? They can decide to do that. They want to, in other words, to switch it to a different purpose. So he says, Maran, right? The Shulcha bit you said, says there's a little bit of a wonder here in Rabbeinu, the tour, right? That he passed like the bright that the Katana Ene Ari Rashaila Kachmem that Sola Sandalo, that the poor cannot divert it to some other purpose, right? To buy shoes or shoelaces. Because the Rif and the Rosh wrote, Sham the letter Lehai Brighta. Uh, so he said, they said that we don't pass like that, Brayta. Right, so then how is it that the tour, right, so it tells you that that's the halacha? Tasrad me'avir al dato shel balabait. So, he says it makes sense. Gazdan um, have right? El akraban gam li alkaim Okay, one second. Let me just read that one more time. Right, so he says like this, right? What's the reason why we don't pass like that brighter? You know, that says the, the poor cannot divert that money to some other purpose, right? They have to get a seuda with that money. So he says regarding that, uh, According to that, according to that uh, opinion, he's telling you right that the problem is like this. You know, when somebody gives you a donation, okay, and 
you take that money and divert it for some other purpose. In other words, that person gave you a donation for a certain purpose, you know, and you diverted it to a different purpose. So according to this opinion, you know, this Brighta, if you do that, you're a thief, you know, like you're, you're you know, you're, 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 you're doing fraud. So, but, right, uh, we don't hold like that. We hold like Rabban Gamliel that is lenient regarding that, right? So what does that mean, lenient? He holds that, you know, once you receive the money, you can do whatever you want with it, right? Um, you know, there's no there's no limitation. Even though they gave you the money for a certain purpose, but once it, once it gets into your hands, you know, you can do what you want with it. That's what that's that's, that's what the Rabban Gamliel holds, and that's how that's halacha. The Gemara Rambam Pek Bet Minchot Megillah he shmit ha de'en ani rashi l'alzim devar acher. He says also the Rambam didn't write this halacha; he left it out. So in other words, you know, it seems like we don't pass him like that. So then, why the question is right? Why did the tour bring that? You know, the you know as if as as, as if it was the halacha. That's the question. Rabbeinu Yerucham katav lehai b'raita avegaris ba divrei Rabbi Meir shemar mishum Rabbi Akiva. So this rabbi also brings that b'raita, and he says, right, that it's said according to these rabbis, katab she rabbim acholkim al-arif poskim ke Rabbi Akiva. So he says, a lot of people are arguing at the riff and poskim like Rabbi Akiva. Mechavero she divrei arif against his friend. Because the riff of this is nirim, the riff says the and but the riff seems to be like the, the halacha. The chen yirei shehu dat rambam zal, and also the rambam holds like that. Okay, <clears throat> good. So then he goes on. Uh, so what's the conclusion regarding that? That you are allowed to divert the money, right? The the per, the poor person who received though that money can divert it to something else if he wants to, even though they gave it to him for the purpose of the seuda. Okay, so then he goes on. It says over here in this book, first pek of Megillah. So he says, if there was money that he thought, you know, to to out on Purim, right? For Purim, you cannot change that. He says, that money, right? Itself, you have to give it to the poor. So meaning what? Uh, don't now, you know, like replace it with some other money. Do a switch, you know, like don't do that, he says, right? Adkan. <laughs> so it says it seems like the reason is because he holds that staka mechayaba uh the machshaba. That um when it comes to the staka, even your thoughts are you know obligate you. Kimosha sovrim ksat poskim, like some poskim hold, you know, that even thinking about it obligates you. That's not the halakha, by the way. Just because you thought to give tzedakah doesn't mean you have to give it. Only if you said so, right? That's something else. Okay, so it says, Like I'm going to write, the tour says, Like I'm going to write, the tour says, Siman reish nunchet, over there, Besiyati dishmaya. So, yeah, that's the story. So, very good. So, we'll we'll see the shulchan uh, here. So session will haruch, right? Very short. And Meshanin not pulling the slakah right? As we said, you shouldn't once you designate right funds for Purim, you shouldn't change it for a different charity, right? You're not allowed to do that. So says the Rama, right? But Dafka le Gabain, that's only talking about the collectors, right? The Gabain. But the poor, as we said, right, he can do whatever he wants with it. So that's the halacha, right? <laughs> that the Gabai, the one who's collecting the money, cannot divert it. But once it gets into the hands of the poor, they can do whatever they want. Do you want to buy some shoes? Go ahead, please. You know, be my guest, right? Do what you want. As we said. Okay, very good. So let's go on a little bit. Let's see what we got coming up. Right, so another thing he says over here. Then medak tekin be maot purim. Right, so ella kol aposhet yadol. He told him something, right? 
So the rule is like this, you know, that when it comes to Purim, we're not we're not particular about the money. So what does that mean? Whoever comes to ask, right, for, for a handout, we give them. If you have, right, if you have what to give, right, uh, you know, you don't have, you don't have, right, whatever. But if you have, and people are coming, you know, asking you, you should give them. Give them something, you know, better to, don't send them away. In other words, what we're saying is don't send them away empty, empty-handed. If they ask you. Give them something. You have. You know? <clears throat> so, so meaning what? That Purim is like a time of, you know, kindness, you know, that where we were kinder and gentler, you know, than, you know, than the rest of the year. Because the rest of the year is not like that. You know, we don't give to anybody, right? Uh, we have to see, right, uh, if it's, you know, if it's feasible to give to this person, you know, he's not a crook, right? He's not a thief, right? He's whatever, you know, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a decent person, you know. Uh, so we don't give to everybody all year round, you know. But when it comes to Purim, whoever, you know, puts his hand out, we give him. That's what it says, right? So he brings a source for this, right? Where's the source? Yerushalmi, Perk Kamati Megillah. First Perk of Megillah, right? Yerushalmi, over there. This is what he says, right? That on Purim, we give to everybody, right? By the way, in the Torah, he says even a goy, right? Uh, we give, you know? And usually, by the way, it's not like that. Usually, you know, we don't give to a goy, you know, unless uh, they're giving to everybody. So then we include the goy. We don't want, we don't want to discriminate, you know what I mean? Discrimination is not good. But if it's just, you know, one, you know, one guy, you know, whatever, right? And, you know, it's not a matter of a group. So then, you know, usually we don't give. But here, right, even to a goy, he says, right, the tour. So that's, you know, but the truth is that here the Bet Yosef doesn't bring that, you know, that we give to a goy. It's interesting. Um, so right, here's the language of the tour here. Yeah, so it says, right, the tour, right? we give it, whether he's a Jew or a non Jew, we give him anyway. That's what the tour says. Right? But, so what is that talking about? It's talking about Purim, right? But the rest of the time is not like that exactly, right? A little bit different. By the way, if you want to see the laws of uh, the, these rules, I made a couple of videos on it, you know? So if you want, one or two videos I have. So if you want to see it, right, about these halachot, when we do give and when we don't give, you know, and all these things, uh, there, are some, there is some material available if you want to check it out. If you don't, if you can't find it, well, let me know. I'll, I'll find it for you, right? I'll I'll send you the link. Because uh, it, it is important to know these rules, you know? Uh, especially if you're going on the subway a lot, right? Uh, in New York City. <laughs> There's a lot of panhandlers over there, you know? So you got to know what to do with them. <clears throat> okay, so, yeah. So that's the end of the tour. Now we'll go to the Bet Yosef. So, yeah, so Bet Yosef, he has, goes on here a little bit. It says, Ah, so right, exactly, this is what we talked about, right? Now he talks about the issue of the Jew and the Goy, right? So he says, <laughs> That's <laughs> We give to both the Goy and the Jew. That's the custom, he says, that we give it even to a goy. So since we're not, you know, particular on Purim, you know, we give to everybody, right? Uh, so he right, this is exactly what he says, right? That the problem is, since we're giving to everybody, right? and then all of a sudden, right, the goy comes and you don't give him, it's going to be like discrimination, you know? So that we don't want. We don't want it to look like discrimination. And so this is the reason why we give, you know, on Purim, to the Goy. Because since we're giving to everybody, right, so if we don't give him, it doesn't look nice, you know, it looks like you're discriminating. So, uh, yeah, that'll cause, you know, hatred, right, uh, you know, hostility, right? But if it's just like one Goy, you know, standing on the street corner, you know, on the subway, there you don't have to give because, you know, there's no, we're not giving to everybody there, we're just giving to one person, right, and uh, this guy, you know. Whatever, right? He's not Jewish. So, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so it goes on. Vitania, it says in the Brighta, we, we, we give them together. In other words, if they're all coming in a group, 
We give to everybody, right? Even on a, even when it's not for him. Why? Because of peaceful relations, you know? We don't want to have, right, to telling people, you know, saying, oh, you know, these Jews, they discriminate against us, you know? Uh, we don't want this kind of stuff. This is the reason why we do it. Okay, good. <clears throat> so then he goes on. So he says, right, the one the person said in front of Rashi, Tamid, the, the disciple, So I also saw that they even give money, you know, on Purim to slaves, right? Israel. Uh, who are working, you know, in the, in the Jewish home, right? You know, these workers, right? Whatever. So he says, that doesn't seem right. He says, my eyes. Uh, in the eyes of my rabbi, who was Rashi, right? The fish in Imar, because it says, So he says, really, the truth is, when you're giving, he says, uh, money, you know, a coin, right? A small coin. To uh, Ebed, right? To a slave, it's like you're stealing away from the poor, the real poor. Uh... Uh, so, right, uh, that's another thing, another opinion here, right? That you shouldn't do that. The time Rabbi Rabbi she told me men will zarkan liyam shemare shematanot hayom af legoim. So he says, my rabbi used to say that it's better, you know, to throw it into the sea, right? The, that those that money. Why? Because then he shows, right, that uh, that the, the gifts of that day are even for the goyim. V'chen katav aram, so it says also in the ram, v'shem rabbeinu Ephraim, name of my Ephraim, katav de be'ir shelo hu gelu b'chach, so he says in a, in a city where they're not accustomed to do this, asul el gilan, we shouldn't accustom them, right? Aval be'ir shelo gelu b'chach, but in a place where there is a custom, you know, to hand out, you know, to everybody, right, you know, whatever. In levat tel adavar, you shouldn't, you shouldn't nullify this. Because of peaceful relations. Let's see. So he says it's possible that Rabbeinu the two is talking place where the custom is like that. But he says when it comes to a new town, right, where you don't have that custom yet, so you don't have to do it. Okay, uh, so just give me one second. I want to see this again. Right, so bottom line is like this, right? What are we? What's the conclusion here? Conclusion is, is that we give to Goim in, in which scenario? When you're giving to everybody else, right? So then we don't want discrimination. But it seems like, you know, if we're not giving to everybody, right, it's not like a handout, you know, like a big handout. So then we don't have to give to the Goy, you know, there's no reason to give to the Goy. That's the idea, right? It's better better not to give at all, you know, uh, give to a Jew or don't give at all. That's what, that's what he's saying. Okay, let's see Shulchan Ruch and see what he says, right, regarding that. Right? As we said, right? We're not particular about the money on Purim, right? So what does that mean? Whoever puts his hand out, we give him. So it's in a place where the custom is to give to also to the Goyim, we do, right? We give to the Goyim. So in other words, here also he explains like that, right? Like we said. That only the place where the custom is to do that. What does that mean? They do like a big handout, you know, in the street. So if you don't give to the goyim, you know, they're going to say discrimination, you know. So in order to avoid that, we give to everybody. That's the idea, you know. But in a place where it's not a custom to do that, right, to give a handout to everybody in the street, whatever, in public, so then there's no reason to give to a goy. <laughs> That's pretty much the story. Okay, so, uh, yeah. Um, by the way, just, you know, on, on the side of, right, the, 
What's the reason why we give to everybody on Purim? What's the, you know, do you know what the reason for that is? Because they say, right, Purim is a time of kindness, you know, divine kindness. So Hashem gives also to us, you know, like whatever we want. That's why they say, you know, there are some commentaries that say, right, that on Purim, you know, whatever you pray for, they give you. So, you know, make sure you pray whatever you want on Purim, you know, pray for the things you want. Because they'll give it to you, you know, whatever, right? Because Purim is a time of like giving, you know, so Hashem is also in, in the mood to give you. So, you know, so we carry on that spirit as well, you know, uh, to, to to our fellow Jews, right? Uh, that we give, you know, what whoever hands puts his hand out, we give him. <laughs> That's the idea, you know, this is the spirit of Purim, you know, we give to everybody. This is the reason why we do that. So it's a special time, you know, it's a special day of the year, you know, whatever, it's like a... Not the usual day, right? Uh, it's a little bit different. The rules are different on Purim <laughs> than all year round. Okay, so yeah. So we have one more here in the Bet Yosef. Let's see if we can finish it off. That's the whole end of the chapter. So he says, Katal Mordechi, Perk Kamada Megillah, right? So it says in the first Perk of Megillah, in the Mordechi, but Makom She'en, Right, so he says, if there are, let's say, right, you're living in a town which there's no poor people there, right? So, you know, what do you do then, right? How do you do the mitzvah? So he says, you know what you do? You, you, you hold on to the money, right? The charity money that you collected, whatever, right? And when you find like a different charity, you can give it to a different charity. You know what I mean? So if you weren't able to do it on Purim, you couldn't find somebody, right, who's eligible. <laughs> so then you, right, you, 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 can, you can save it for a different charity. That's what he's saying. Okay, very simple, right? Uh, so, you know, because we have no choice, basically, right? There's nobody to give. By the way, sometimes here also in this area, you know, where I live, it's hard sometimes to find somebody like that, you know, somebody poor like that. You know, usually people have what to eat, you know what I mean? Like, not so easy to find somebody, like, in, you know, locally that doesn't have what to eat, you know, and uh, he needs money for Purim, you know, to eat a, to, to eat his meal, you know, to have a bagel cream cheese. You know what I mean? Usually, you know, you don't find things like that. It's, you know, in Israel, you, there are people, you know, who are much more needy than here, right, than America. You know, America is uh, relatively richer, you know, whatever, right? Uh, standard living is a little bit higher. Okay, whatever, right? You get the idea. So says Shulchan Aruch regarding that. Right? As we said, same thing, right? That in the place where you can't find any poor. So what do you do, right? Save that charity money that you had put aside, right? What I collected. And use it for a different charity, right? That's that's pretty pretty much what, right? what whatever charity you want to give to, right? As long as it's a kosher charity, right? Uh, don't give to some crazy charity, you know what I mean? Something something which is not not worthwhile, right? For a Jew, you know, to give it gives to she give to a nice good cause, you know, the Torah cause, Jewish cause, right? Uh, whatever, you know, something credible in, in Jewish in the Jewish Jewish religion, right? That's the idea. Uh, don't just waste your money, you know, on uh, nonsense, right? Okay, very good. So we're finished with the chapter. We have like uh, three more chapters and we're done. And then, anyways, as we said, we're going to go back to to Matzot, right? To Matzot. So you can all make Matzot at home, right? You don't have to buy in a store. You can just all make, everybody can do it in his own oven. <laughs> we'll see what happens. <laughs> we'll take it day by day. Okay, very good. So, we'll see you uh, tomorrow. Chazak Baruch. Be blessed with wealth, health, and happiness. I heard good things today, Baruch Hashem. Uh, right on, the, you know that uh, they killed the, you know, in that town, you know, in Gaza, the, the, where they conquered, they killed like two thousand Nazis over there. You know, it's Baruch Hashem, very good. They're doing a great job, and they're about to get to the leaders over there. They're hiding over there. You know, these sewer rats. You know, they're they're gonna dig them out and you know, execute them. You know, what, uh, hopefully, Bezat Hashem, God willing, Amalek is gonna be right uprooted. As much as possible. I think, you know, they've gotten, I'll tell you, it's incredible. You know, I don't, like, I don't remember modern history 
where you know the Jews have done such a strong you know vengeance on their enemies, you know during my lifetime, such a thing like this, you know, where we're talking about you know they've killed like twenty thousand Nazis over there. Uh, pretty good, not bad. <laughs> Can't complain on that one. <laughs> okay, Bez Hashem. So we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you, Rabbi. All the best.